Um, all right, so a small disclaimer about this. Uh, I usually start with a disclaimer. It's, it's always different, though. Um, I've been talking to, is Jeff Williams in the audience? Okay, so I've been talking with Jeff a fair amount. Uh, I gave, this, I gave a, a version of this talk at, at QCon out west, and we, we talked a lot about an OWASP threat modeling project as a result of it. And what occurs to me, actually, is that threat modeling is kind of one of those advanced techniques. It's one of those things where you have to sit down and think real hard about what could possibly go wrong with your software. And in, in a lot of regards, that's, that's quite difficult. And um, it may not even be necessary. So how many people are building web apps in Java here? Right? How many of those are three tier? Um, how many people are starting to use some of the web 2.0 and 3.0 stuff? Right? So my guess is that if you were going to draw some boxes and lines about your system, they might look a lot like everyone else's. And so what we're striving to do, rather than teach everyone to spend you know, a month doing threat modeling, We'd really prefer to build you a threat modeling cookbook um, that you can use and extend. Uh, notwithstanding that, uh, you know there is still a need for your own your business logic, um, your applications that don't necessarily support uh, the OWASP, you know, kind of three-tier Java or .NET idiom, to actually think about how those applications could be penetrated and what you're going to do in order to either test to see that they don't uh, actually fall prey to those vulnerabilities. Um, run static analysis or alternatively do some secure design. So think of threat modeling actually as you know, the step that you do to think about what things aren't on the checklist. And so you're not going to want to do that for all of your applications. You're not going to want to do that um, thoroughly for all your applications. You're going to want to base it on risk. Um, one more disclaimer, this is actually a four-hour presentation, so I'm going to attempt to compete with Dennis Cruz in terms of, uh, you know, word speed, and uh, leave behind all the slides so you can look at them in, in greater depth. The first thing to talk about is what is a threat. Um, there's a lot of confusion about what a threat is and what threat modeling is, because everyone who's published a book or paper on this topic seems to ignore everything that came before them. Um, you can go back to the, the, the mid and early 70s and people were talking about threat modeling. Um, the Microsoft book and, and other books on the topic seem to have basically just ignored that stuff. Uh, so what we're going to say is um, there's a lot of different definitions. There is a lot of confusion. We're going to talk about um, a threat being an agent, someone who, someone or someone's software that can, can attack you. And there's these other words that I will try to use very consistently, like attack vector and an asset under attack. And there's other words that you'll hear bantied about. If you saw Dennis's talk uh, on O2, you heard about attack surface. So, so what is an attack surface and what is an attack vector? And what is the attack delivery? Um, one of the things that, that when I have a whiteboard and give this as a, as a class, we actually build a table and we start to talk about who will do the attack, what they will actually use to deliver the attack, what the attack will, will entail, and then what the consequences of that attack are, what that attack's operating on. It's key to think about all of those concepts, because if you don't, you're not going to be thorough about um, having looked at the worldview of, of what could possibly go wrong in your application. What most people forget is they forget to think about the who. They think about the specific kinds of attacks that are in the checklists, and they think about you know, some definition of attack vector, but they don't remember to think about who. They don't think about people like insiders or, or malicious developers. Um, and it may be that your organization doesn't need to think about those things. If you're in a financial shop, my guess is that you're about to get smaller, if you haven't already. And if you had 4,000 developers and next month you have 2,000, you may have 2,000 angry ex-developers. Um, and so thinking about what, what these people have access to and what the attack surface of your application looks like relative to that is interesting. We'll also talk about, if you're not concerned about insiders, how uh, external threats can increase their privilege to the extent that they can actually begin to look like internal threats. And so the notion of an internal, who's internal to your application, and when you really start looking at the design, um, actually gets quite dubious quite fast. 
So in thinking about, I'm not going to attempt to fight the vocabulary war here, but the moral of the story is if you think about who and you think about their motivation, you think about what they're going to use to actually break the system, um, you're going to end up more thorough. So what is a threat model? Um, it's actually really hard to answer this question because we don't exactly have a common nomenclature and uh, symbology for design. So if we don't have a way that we can consistently talk about and draw designs, then it's impossible for us to come up with a way to talk about threat models. Because threat models are, in essence, uh, an annotation of design. So in some sense, in defining threat modeling, we're doomed to fail. Um, and, 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 and because we can't agree on how to write down our designs. But the things that we want to look up uh, is, is kind of where the attack surface is, who can attack the system, and what they might be willing or, or interested in comp compromising. We can talk about the probability of attack and estimation, and we can weight impacts. Sometimes weighting the impacts is far more uh, easy than actually the probability of attacks. Um, so we can talk about things like discoverability and exploitability, and we'll talk about that. My, my suggestion is that we look, at, um, we look at the impact of attacks and we prioritize based on impacts, uh, and we not get wrapped around the axle of probability. Really, um, threat models, in my mind, are, are the intersection of um, your goals for the system, how misuse of the system uh, could occur, and how those goals would be violated. And um, I'm going to go over the general process quickly, and then we're going to dig into some techniques that me and my guys have found useful in helping people with secure design, in helping people with code and architecture analyses uh, to figure out who can attack their system, what design elements might be vulnerable, and then how to test it. Um, I, I did give you the disclaimer that there that, that there can be no, you know, authoritative, uh, s you know, symbology right now. I'm going to throw up some stuff that has been useful and scrubbed from our environment and from our assessments. Um, these diagrams, you can feel free to use them. They're a lot. They're hybrid. Those of you who are UML purists or or, or particular other diagramming technique purists are going to sort of be agitated because they're they're hybrid diagrams of structure and behavior. Um, each of them is meant to show a particular type of thing. Really what's key here is not the actual look of it, but what we were doing and what we were considering. And if these slides are not available, um, which I believe they are, I sent them a month or so ago, uh, just ask. So what are the elements of a threat model? We know that we're going to need a structural view of the system. We're going to need a structural technical view of the software and the application. Network topology diagrams will not be sufficient. We're going to need to know who could abuse the system and where, much like in a misuse case or a, or a use case, where those actors would interact with the systems. We're going to want to know what aspects of the system that they're going to want to interact with that will include things and functionality. So assets can, are not just a database table. 